Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. And we're going to take a look at rugby, which has finally joined the fray, taking on the good fight, going with the side of the angels, and is banning men from playing rugby against women. And it's about time. It's taken rugby two years of a full investigation to get to the point where they are now confident that they can, quite safely, stop women from being hurt by men. Seems common sense to me. But the ban could start as, earlier, as early as this season, with a bit of luck. But why so long? Who knows? Maybe they just didn't want to offend the tiny, tiny minority of mentally ill people who think it's quite acceptable to hurt women on a field of sport. Who knows? Anyway, there's an article here that we're going to look at and to see that finally common sense has arrived in the world of rugby. Right, so uh, yeah, here's the headline. Breaking news. English rugby wants to ban men, they call them transgender women, but men, from playing in women's games. And quite right too. Men generally are bigger, faster and stronger than women and tend to also to be more aggressive. So it's quite wrong for a man to play a woman in a very, very hard contact sport like rugby, where apart from the natural unfairness of it all, he has the liability of causing life-changing and possibly even life-ending injuries. So why this has taken two years from the rugby union to actually arrive at this point beggars belief. Nobody surely is that stupid, are they? Who knows? I, I, I don't think so. I think they've pus pussyfooted around for political reasons and make it look as though we've taken two years, when in actual fact, in reality, it would have taken them two minutes to make the decision. But, uh, you know, they've got to give uh, the optics a glance, haven't they? Meanwhile, I wonder how many women have been hurt by men on a field of rugby. But getting into the meat of the article, uh, the rugby union has today recommended a ban on transgender women, i.e. men, playing in women's matches. Uh, this decision has come following a two-year review and a change in policy could be introduced ahead of the 2022-23 season if approved by the RFU Council. And a statement read, the RFU Council will vote on a recommendation for a policy change for contact rugby to only permit players in the female category whose sex was recorded at birth as female. Why not just call them women? None of this, oh, sex at birth was. No, because it doesn't matter what your sex at birth was, because that is your sex for the rest of your life. And if you're recorded as male at birth, you will never, ever, ever be anything other than male. Because you're male. Doesn't matter how many dresses you wear, anyway. This is a complex and difficult decision. No, it's not. Uh, and the recommendation has not been made lightly. It should have been. All without thorough and full research and consultation. Here's the research. Are men bigger, faster and stronger than women? And are they more aggressive? Yes, I believe they are. Well, let's ban them then. Certainly. To the bar? Definitely. That's all the consultation you needed. But of course, that's not the optics. Oh, all these one, this 0.1% of mentally ill people might think that we just rushed to a decision that anyone would make if they've got the tiniest modicum of common sense. Anyway, the RFU has contacted registered trans female players, mentally ill men, on whom the policy will have a direct impact to offer its support in continuing to encourage them to participate in the sport. I'm presuming they've pointed them that way, to the men's team. The current policy had seen the English governing body allow some transgender women to play women's rugby on a case-by-case -case basis. So they were going to allow men to play against women. Sweet. Hope the women don't mind as they're getting pummeled into the ground. However, English rugby has now changed its mind. Well, I should think so. Saying research provides evidence of physical differences. No shit, Sherlock. And advantages in strength, stamina and physique due to male puberty. Who'd have thunk it? Oh, that's right, everybody. They therefore said the decision came because the inclusion of trans people assigned male at birth, oh God, men, in female contact rugby cannot be balanced against considerations of safety and fairness, which is what everyone has been saying from day one. Everyone that is apart from the mentally ill and their groupies. 
Anyway, the decision on transgender players sees the RFU align with World Rugby, who state transgender women may not currently play women's rugby because of the size, force and power producing advantages conferred by testosterone due, during puberty and adolescence. And it's not just testosterone. There are other factors in as well. Uh, the Times claims there are currently five or six transgender women, men, who are actively players or active players because the RFU have previously seen no increased risk to opponents based on size and weight playing amateur rugby in England. So risking the lives of women. Girls and boys will remain unaffected by the decision and can play in their respective current teams until they turn 12. So if you have an early puberty boy uh, who is just before his 12th birthday, he's still capable being quite, at this point, much more musculature-based than some of the younger players, um, of pummeling a girl into the ground. Fairness. That's what we like to see. Fairness all round. But at least it's a start. And finally, we're going to see women not getting beaten to the ground and pummeled and trampled and hurt and damaged and have bones broken and noses broken and elbows in the chin by men who are inadequate and who feel that they're not going to do very well playing against other men but they're going to shine when they're beating women so finally rugby well done a tentative thumbs up the ban hasn't come through yet as soon as it does you'll get two thumbs up anyway she'll come up and round off so well done to rugby uh, it's joining the good side um, it's another sport. The tide is turning. Uh, so you've got rugby, cycling, swimming and so on. Now, obviously, not all sports are suited to split the men and women. Show jumping, for example, has always had men and women because, after all, the horse does 95% of the actual work. And games of skill like uh, shooting or snooker, again, not, not, not strength related. There's no advantage in being a man or a woman. Although jockeying probably would have the advantage of being a woman with a more slender frame. But that's an argument for another time. But... Well done, as I say, and the, the fight goes on. So here's to the next sport, whoever it may be. If you like what you hear and see on the channel, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Ring the bell for notifications of future output. Leave a like, leave a comment, and until next time, stay safe, stay well, and goodbye.